Hey everybody, this is Rudy Sarzo with The Dash, and today's guest is John Melendez. Yeah, stuttering John, you can call me it, Rudy. No, no, you know what, you, you work so hard to get rid of the stutter. And yeah. I think, I mean, you know, listen, I've, I've been watching you since the, the old days, you know, with Howard Stern, you know, with the yeah. pack, the whack pack and all of that. And you were really... No, a- that's the one thing, Rudy, and I took it out of your blurb. I was never a whack packer. Well, okay, okay. <laughs> but, you know, I, I guess everybody that was involved with the show is considered a whack packer, you mm-hmm. know. But, you know, your involvement with the show. Yeah. And you are really a complex individual because you've done so much outside of the Howard Stern. Yeah. You know? And you, you definitely had a progression in your life. And that's what I really want to talk about. And... So instead of me saying, okay, John Melinda's from so-and-so, I want you to give me five identities, five adjectives that describe who you are. Uh, okay, loving. Oh, you mean like a family man? Yeah, great, great father, great, lovers, great kids. You know, that's, that's really important. That was your first one. Yeah, that's, that's for, that very would probably significant. be the most important. Uh, very significant. Caring. Caring. Um... Funny, I guess, would Funny, be Funny, comedian, there. you're a comedian, yeah. okay. Um, mischievous. Mischievous, okay. A prankster, and, yes. okay. And romantic. Romantic, okay. <laughs> I love playing I love my that. guitar. <laughs> okay, well, I was just going to bring that up. Okay, how about, how about we start there? You are a musician. Yes, and you know, it's weird because I've been playing all my life. I started out on the recorder like they do here in, in the States... Where are you from again? There's a stutter. Where are you from again? I was born in Cuba. Cuba, yeah. What about your family? Where were they born? Well, my well, well, my mother straight up the boat from Denmark, so she oh, came really? over. Okay. You know, when she was 18, I mean, uh-huh. she was she dealt with the war as a child, with the you know, with the planes overhead and the, World War know, II. And the, yeah, the, yeah, the bomb shelters. Actually, my great cousin ran the Danish underground. Wow. And, and he smuggled Jews out of Denmark. Into Sweden and just to get him out. Is your family Jewish? No, 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 no. You know, but my mom's born. side is Episcopalian, uh-huh. and then my father uh-huh. is is Puerto Rican. His mm. parents were from Puerto Rico, okay, and their parents were from yeah. Spain. So. Yeah. No, no. I ask you about the Jewish heritage because you mentioned that it, your your great grandfather helped. Yeah, Fox, yeah. You know. Now the Danes are just good freaking people, really. I'm sure you play. I've been there. Then <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Love it. Wonderful. That is really helpful. I mean, mm-hmm. how many times have they, have they been voted the happiest place? Yeah, you know, like yeah, exactly. to live in the world because the government yeah. takes care of everybody. Like mm-hmm. no one's worried about health care. No one's worried. Yeah. You know, they get six, f- four months off for yeah. vacation paid. But for tours, it's very expensive. I, I yeah. Mean, Nor- you know, all the Scandinavian countries, especially Norway. Oh, my God. I yeah. mean, I, I, I toured there with, uh, with Ronnie James Dio, and I remember going to get a Happy Meal at yeah. McDonald's. It was like 20 bucks. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super expensive. Wow. Yeah. But um, I will say that uh, I was, so I started, you know, I played the record, and then I, then I, all through my life, they asked me to do the solos, like, you know, the vocal solos, like Sunrise, Sunset, and I was always singing, mm-hmm. and um, I played the trumpet. Oh, wow. And uh, it's a funny story, really, <laughs> it's my favorite, like, so all my friends would say, don't play the trumpet, it'll screw up your lips. Uh, my private inst- instructor, Frank Fico, had these weird lips, yeah, these yeah, weird, yeah. thin, yeah, yeah. like, Z-shaped lips, yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> and... So finally, I said to Frank, like in a private lesson, I said, Frank, all my friends say, if I play too much trumpet, it's going to screw up my lips. He goes, that's ridiculous. Look at mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck this. So I picked up the guitar, you know? <laughs> so I got my first guitar when I was 12, after I was confirmed, like, you know, my confirmation present as a captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got my first cheap guitar. I taught myself how to play it. And that was it. I, I wrote my first song that, you know, that I copied, you know... Yeah. You know, I had a copy written, and I was in the battle bands in high school, and we were like the, you know, we had all the theatrics like Ozzy did, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. we had, uh, you know, we hung somebody, we did guillotines, we yeah, had, yeah. you know, we did Godzilla, we had Godzilla playing in the yeah, background. Yeah. We were like, people would write our names on the desk and our logo, Stiff Minister. Stiff and Minister. Stiff Minister. We were all over the high school, so even in the yearbook, like, you have our band and the other yeah. band. Like there with all of us in our leathers yeah. and stuff. 
I was always a musician, and that's one of the reasons I started with Howard. I said, you know, I, I wanted to promote my band. I always dreamed of getting a record deal. And thank God, I ultimately got signed to Atlantic Records. Oh, you did? Yeah. What year was this? This was in 1993, and the album came out in 94. Uh, I got a good review from... Was that Jason Flom that uh, signed you guys? No, Craig Kalman, who's oh, now the chairman. Okay. yeah. And he gave me a Gibson special. It's real. It's one out of 571. You ever still made. have it? Yeah. Oh, nice. But he, you know, I mean, he loved the band, and he loved my songwriting and everything else, and... Uh, like I said, we got a good review in Rolling Stone magazine, mm-hmm. and we opened up for everyone from Collective Soul, Cheap Trick, David Lee Roth, and to all the country with Ted Nugent. And, you know, it was like, just like I've lived, I've always said, Rudy, I, li- I have lived the life of Forrest Gump, only I was too stupid to invest in Apple stock. Because I anything I've ever wanted to do, like I wanted to get a record deal, I had my, I had my video with Sting and Gene Simmons. In my video, two great bass players, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, such yeah. as yourself, yeah, yeah. and you know, and I just oh, anything I put my mind to, I've been able mm-hmm. to achieve. And I know, like I'm not a multimillionaire or anything mm-hmm. by any stretch of imagination, but anything I wanted to do, I have done, and I think it, like that's the one thing that you know, like the one thing I think that if anything that, and it's in my book that's coming out in October that you wrote. Yeah, the tell, book me, for, tell me about it, your book. It's like the one thing is. Never, ever, and I and I mean this wholeheartedly, and never accept the word can't. Mm-hmm. Never let anybody tell you that you can't do something. Mm-hmm. And never believe the voices in your head that have doubt. Mm-hmm. You know, do whatever you want and be whatever you want to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what I could say. I mean, look, you know, two of my songs were in two different film soundtracks, like one with Adam Sandler, Airheads, and, mm. you know, when I got to be in the movie, then I got to be in Do Where's My Car, I always wanted to be an actor, I got to write a movie that I star in, and I sold to National Lampoon. Mm. It's just like, anything I've wanted to do, I've been able to do, and, you know, obviously not like you, where you were in the biggest arenas in, you know, in the world with Ozzy and Quiet Riot and stuff, but I still, you know, I was able to, you know, have a career in music and sign a big six-figure publishing deal and everything else. What do you think, from the things that you just mentioned to me, was your biggest accomplishment? My three kids. And I, you know what, Rudy, that is my, you know, that's, you know, I dedicate my book to them. I mean, kids to me, like, you understand, I, I grew up as a, you know, our, our father beat the crap out of us. And it was a very difficult thing because he was a great guy, very funny guy. But when... He had that Hispanic temper, and when he would he'd snap, he would slap the shit out of all of us. One of my earliest memories of when my sister came home late one day, she was like 13, I was like 5, whatever. My father met her at the door and started slapping the shit out of her, like, you know. And my mom had to run downstairs, topless, with the boobs hanging out, and jumps on my father's back to pull him off of my sister, and all... I remember saying is my back against the door and I'm saying oh no not again which only implies it happened you know before so one of the conscious decisions I made when I was like 10 years old is I'm going to have kids I'm never going to hit them I'll rarely raise my voice mm-hmm. I'm going to have a son named Oscar mm-hmm. and I will never hit that kid and and I was finally my third kid was uh, it was a son named Oscar, but that has you know that is probably the biggest accomplishment. Now, what's the meaning of Oscar of naming your son Oscar? You know, I always liked it. It's a Danish name. I know it's a Spanish name as well, but it, you know, it's a Danish name. It sounds different. I wanted something more you know old fashioned, something different than you know the Ashleys and the you know I don't know the, I don't know what's happened like happen, the Jareds or the. You know, I just wanted something that was going to be... Yeah, it needs to go with Oscar Melendez. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, you know, but I was going to give him... The, like, right before we named him, I was going to maybe... Because he's O-S-C-A-R. I was going to change the O-S-K for the Danish Oh, yeah, Oscar. yeah, yeah. But I decided if he wants to change it one day, he can. You know? Yeah. That's wonderful. But of all the other things outside of your family... What the hell was this drink you gave me? That was a smoothie. 
Yeah, what was it? And, and, and uh, like, was it? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Kale, though, right? It's, it's too good for you. No, no, no. It's, I'm not, you know, it was perfect. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I, it's. I'm sorry that I, I, I didn't have the beard that you. No, but this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> so smoothies like the uh, the next fermented. Thing did you ever have. drink? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, and then yes, what I happened? Did. You just said that. I had an out of body experience where I actually saw the asshole that I was. Uh, drunk, really? And never drank ever again. Oh wow! So yeah. you, really, you were an asshole when you would get drunk. Who isn't? <laughs> I'm more of a loving one who hugs everybody. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you know, I'm like the I love you man drunk. You yeah, know yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's still a little borderline, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, so that's like you know, that's uh, you know, so that's the biggest compliment. After that, you know. I would, you know, a lot of people would say Howard Stern and stuff, but I, I, you know, I, I, I think I take more pride in the writing for the Tonight Show with Jay Leno and to. That's interesting. That's yeah. it. But see, because I, I look. If I'm going to compare your your trajectory with mine, I would say your Howard Stern was my Ozzy. Yeah. And I always say, if it wasn't for Randy recommending me, trusting me. For the Aussie gig, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. We won't be having this conversation. Yeah, you know. And it's interesting that that looking from the outside, of course, you know, you have to relate to it the way that you do. I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but looking from the outside, I would take a guess that the Howard Stern led you to other things. Oh, 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 yes, yes, like without a doubt, but. You know, it's a, it's a toss up. I mean, like you can get me on another day, and I say I'm most proud of the interviews that I did on Howard. That was and really becoming a you know a main character on that show. You know, wouldn't as an intern. It, you know, if if I because I did watch the, all those interviews, and I thought they were outstanding. Not only from your approach, but also from the approach that the person that was being interviewed was taking towards you. Because see, you weren't just. Uh, at the average person interviewing, you had to stutter. Yeah. And that kind of like have to like, you don't want to be rude with somebody that has, a, you know, a speech uh, impediment, right? Uh, and so you're kind of like, the, you were able to say things that the average, you know, the person who spoke with the average diction yeah. would. Yeah. And I, I thought this is really a complex situation because you could be insulting somebody. And still, they're not gonna—they're not gonna beat the crap out of you. Yeah, yeah. So that will make him look like the worst asshole in the world. Yeah, I still got beat up though. <laughs> <laughs> like who? Who beat you up? Let's see. I got punched by Raquel Welsh. <laughs> well, see, that's a woman. That's, that's you know, a woman. in the nose. I was. Punched. What did you ask her? What did you ask? I her? asked her, "Are they drooping yet?" <laughs> <laughs> and I had to ask her twice. The first time she ignored me. The second time I asked him, boom. <laughs> and, I, and I was gonna sue her. No. And then. I remember I was on the phone. I mean, was it a full punch? Or? It was like there was a karate. She she takes karate. No, it was the back of her fist. So it really <laughs> and my nose was swollen. And I, remember, <laughs> I know. And I was gonna sue. And I remember I answered the phone once. Uh, Andrew Dice Clay was a guest, and I was talking yeah. to him off the yeah, air. Yeah. yeah. And, and I told him and I, I was thinking about suing. He goes. What are you going to do? Tell the whole world you get your ass kicked by a chick? <laughs> so I didn't sue. But I, I was punched by Morton Downey Jr. Sharon Stone's bodyguard lifted me up, put uh, both hands, four fingers in my mouth and lifted me up and threw me like out of the MTV Music Awards. Um, I, I was asking her, will there be any upcoming, upcoming crotch scenes? This was after Basic Instinct. Yeah, yeah. And he did that and you know, and I pushed him twice, and he just, boom, laid me out, and people were jumping on my back, and I did sue Sharon Stone. I think I I settled somewhere between, like, ten and 30000 you know? Really? Yeah, but it was just like, I was just getting tired of getting, I mean, like, Eric Gozi in security threw me down a flight of stairs. I was just getting, like, where I was always getting beaten up at the end. Yeah, they know? probably just saw you coming and beat the hell out of you yeah. if you said anything. <laughs> now... Would you have asked the same questions if you didn't have the stutter? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, ever since I was a little kid, I've been asking. I mean, in Howard's book, and it'll be in mine, um, you know, the, my fifth grade teacher wrote in my report card, John 
John tends to ask outrageous and penetrating questions in class and stutters when excited. And that is, that's always been who I am. I, I don't have a filter. I try and be as respectful as possible, but it, a lot of it comes out of innocence. Like I would ask girls like in fifth grade, you know, do you have hair down there yet?